السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے آور ٹاپک از سیکنڈ ایکٹ آف دا پلے ہیڈا کیبلر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف دا ایکٹ نمبر ٹو پریویس واز دا ایکٹ نمبر ٹو پارٹ ون اینڈ دس از ایکٹ ٹو پارٹ نمبر ٹو سو آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو ہیو ویل انڈرسٹوڈ دا پریویس پارٹ آف دا سیم ایکٹ وچ وار انکلوڈیڈ ود دا مین ایونٹس آف دا ایکٹ اینڈ انالسز اینڈ ود دا ریلیٹڈ تھیمس of the same act so let us start the second part of act number 2 in this act we will observe the main events of the second part of act number 2 as well as we will see the analysis and and commentary about uh, the second part of act number 2 Tasman enters dressed for the party Hedas just that if upon his arrival Lauberg decides not to join the men for the party he can dine with her Tasman thinks This would be improper since Aunt Julie will not be there. So in this in this event in these lines students we can observe uh, we can observe that uh, uh, Tasman shows uh, some uh, some care about had a uh, or he wants to guard her but on the other hand we also can see that lauberg is lauberg is also willing to spend some time with hedda uh, this thing points out that uh, there may be some kind of an extra marital affair or some previous affair between lauberg and hedda gabler next next event is lauber writes and discusses his new book he says that it is not very good because he was just trying to please everyone with a general history of the past but that another book the manuscript of which he has with him will certainly be worth reading so in these lines uh, lauberg's lean and haggard look reflects his years of alcoholism and how hard he has been working to reestablish himself and it also fits the idealized image of the artist something had a points appealing that lauberg can so readily dismiss his popular book gives us an indication of the man's vision as a scholar lauberg designed his old book to confirm people's pre-existing beliefs and so win him praise his new book however will be more radical he announces so further in these lines we we start the new book contains a prediction 
for the future so uh, about uh, the new book of uh, uh, of lobberg we can we can analyze it as uh, unlike tasman's including conventional book on that didn't require any real spirit or creativity to write lobberg's book is a work distinctively his own something true to his in most self there is something heroic in this regardless of whether or not to or not the book is a success ibsen then portrays this heroism both sincerely and ironically as the plot unfolds in a telling contrast between the two men tasman cannot imagine knowing anything about the future but lauberg is courageous enough to speculate Uh, next line lauberg also states that he won't compete with tasman for a position at the university as he only wants public acknowledgement of his reform and success so here in this line Lauberg and Tasman are talking about a professorship at a university uh, because there was a tussle between the two men both were willing to get the position uh, uh next line Tasman is revealed and explains to Hedda that nothing now stands in their way but had a resents her inclusion in his excitement so we can analyze in these lines that tasman rather transparently begins probing lauberg for his intention regarding the professorship unlike the borgius Tasman however Lauberg has no interest in pursuing an academic post for the sake of prestige he only wants to produce work shattering work Hedda disassociates herself from her husband throughout the play but most strongly in Lauberg's presence The next event is at this point Hedda suggests that the men have some punch before leaving but Elder Lauberg refuses not wanting to drink alcohol thus Barak and Tasman go to an adjoining room to enjoy their punch while Hedda entertains Lauberg so in these lines students had a call for punch seems to be designed as a test for lover she wants to see whether he trusts himself to drink which in turn will tell her what his weaknesses are had a always intent to avoid a scandal pretends to innocently look at a photo album with lover when she is ready preparing for an intimate conversation the next lines are next event is uh, immediately lover expresses dismay at having to refer to hada as hada tasman rather than hada gabler he also murmurs hada's name very slowly he began a discussion about their past and when tasman refers from 
re enters from the other room so in this lines it becomes very clear at once that lauper has very strong feelings for hedda just as tesman referred to mrs elsted as rising so too does else uh, uh, loveberg refer to hedda familiarly by her maiden name hedda hushes his scandalous words at once they uh, when uh, when uh, tesman enters from the other room they pretend to be talking about pictures of the mountains that tesman gathers on their honeymoon lauber correctly guesses that hedda does not love tesman and asks whether she ever loved lauber so in these lines we can uh, we can learn that uh, judge barak looks on from the other room in jealousy he senses that hedda and lover are more to each other than they let on and he wants to be the only other man in hedda's life it may also be the case that he is trying to get some dirt on hedda so that he will have something to hold over her head and give him power over her hedda insists distance with lover just as with barak she feels that only tawdryness and ugliness could come of an affair hedda is not interested in having power over someone only so that it can be squandered like that she longs for something more unique and beautiful and further tasman here seems to regard lover not only as a professional but also as something of a sexual rival hence he repeatedly comes over to keep an eye on him and hedda ironically tasman only immaculates himself in this by doing the maid's work for his wife tasman's allusion to his sexual relationships with hedda seems designed to rather crudely mark his territory so to speak once again hedda is repulsed by any men- mention of sex as asso- associated with herself further there is also a question raised by tesman uh, 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 lauberg question is raised by lauberg about love between hedda and tesman so we we further discuss it she admits that it was thrilling to share a special intimacy with him unknown to anyone else they reminisce about how lauberg would confess his drinking problems to hedda when their relationship as comrades become too serious Lauberg says he has confessed nothing to Mrs. Elsted because she is too stupid 
to understand hada then says she has something to confess to loveberg loveberg guesses that it might be that they sh- they share a passion for life but hada wants him not to get carried away hada broke off the relationship even threatening to shoot loveberg with her father's pistols yet she was too afraid of scandal and it was at his, at this point that loveberg went to the elf states at that moment mrs elstead enters she greets the men in the other room hada makes her sit beside her so hada is in the middle lover asks hada to admire mrs elstead and he states that she inspires him too keep his life on the right track hada however in in sunyet that some might think that he felt insecure and did not have enough confidence in himself mrs elstead is alarmed when hada mentions barak's amusement but lover seems resolved and declares he does not care what anyone thinks hada tells mrs elstead that she apparently had no reason to be so anxious when she visited that morning Lovberg is surprised and asks what Mrs. Elster could have been worried about. Lovberg is angered by Mrs. Elster's presumption that he might go on a drinking binge now that he is in town in defiance. He quickly downs a drink and pours himself an other. Mrs. Elstead is horrified and Lovberg asks whether it was a conspiracy between her and her husband that Mrs. Elstead come to town to spy on him. He decides to go to the party with judge barak and tasman and he takes the manuscript of his upcoming book with him to show parts of it to tasman at the party he promises to return later to escort mrs elstead home the three men leave mrs elstead is very worried but hada insists that she stay and wait for lovebirds return she promises that he will return with wine leaves in his hair so in this uh, this part of the act number 2 part second we we can uh, analyze that uh, we learn that uh, from the whole this part uh, we learn that the woman who mrs elstead was worried about the woman from elgers past who threatened him with pistols was hada
This was suggested at the end of Act 1. When Hedda goes to play with her pistols, Ibsen often hints at the true nature of a relationship before making it clear. Hedda clearly keeps Lauberg in a fairly high regard, yet she goes, uh, she does not refrain from manipulating him, causing him to drink after years of abstinence. She seems to enjoy semi-adulterous relationships with men not because she admires the men but because she wants to control them. A key method in controlling Barak and Lovebug apparently is to make them think that she wants to keep them in their confidence without letting Tessman know. When Tessman ne nears the couch where she and Lovberg are talking, she quickly changes the subject. Further, uh, we can uh, say that uh, at the same time, one often wonders at Hedda's sanity because this is a play not a novel. We gain no access to the character's thoughts. Ibsen does not even include soliloquies or asides during which the audience might hear a character's inner reflections. When Hedda pretends to fire at Barak, it could be merely the playfulness of a capricious girl or it could indicate incipient insanity. Further, we can say that in this act we get answer of two questions about Hedda's character which are answered for us in the first in this act first we are offered an explicit explanation as to why she married George Tessman. Hedda says I had danced myself out that was all my time was up it is a curious statement because from all we have learned about Hedda, we might wonder why she would succumb to societal pressure to get married. What seems more likely is that for all her dancing, she is not financially independent. Ultimately, she needed to ally herself with a man who could support her and take care of her marital needs. And in that sense, Tessman is a model, if not superior husband. Hedda, it seems, has an oddly narrow conception of life. There are only a certain number of people and things that she is interested in and when non, none of these are present, she becomes deathly bored. This feeling of boredom seems to well up in her life like, like a tide of black sludge, not unlike the rage or envy scene in countless flawed tragic heroes or villains. 
When Hedda gets bored, it seems terrible things start to happen. The second relevation comes when Barak implies that children might help alleviate Hedda's boredom and renew her, but she refuses to acknowledge that she is pregnant or to even entertain the idea of having children. The idea of having children with Tasman of her time fully being up is abhorrent and she seems to view raising children with the same sense of boredom. Indeed, the only thing that continually gets a rise out of Hedda is shooting her pistols. The idea of ending life at any moment keeps her boredom at bay. The issue of Barak's triangle proportion we can see uh, in this act is an interesting one if only because we cannot get for certain whether it is sexual in nature. Barak at first suggests that Hedda jump out of her marriage every so often In other words, have an affair with Barak, but Hedda quickly rebuffs such a possibility. However, when Barak says we will jump in with the couple, creating a triangle, Hedda is more than open to the idea. But what exactly does Barak mean by jumping in? How can this kind of triangle possibly sustain itself if one of the points, namely Tessman, is unaware that it exists? Further, we, we, we can analyze slowly we are beginning to understand Hedda's modus operandi. She feels trapped by a word that she feels is closing in on her and has no resource but uh, has no uh, recourse but to try to expand her circle. As, as much as she can without endangering her marriage. If there is one thing Hedda is afraid of, it is scandal. The idea that some, somehow her name might be tarnished, uh, uh, might be uh, tarnished uh, like uh, since it, it's the only thing left that's still wholly her own. So here act number two of the play Hedda Gabler is ended as we discussed many of events from the act and uh, also analyzed them deeply. So here are some symbols which are related with this specific act of the play. So first symbol which is used in the act is names. Uh, as evi evidenced by the title, names are a big deal in Hedda Gabler. They reflect the tension between formality and intimacy or between single and married life. 
Here are some examples. Lover, uh, El, Elgert Lover calls Hedda Hedda Gabler because he still imagines her as the girl he once knew, not the married woman she is now. Hedda won't call Aunt Julie by her first name because she feels it's too informal and wants to keep her distance. On the other hand, Julie calls Hedda by her first name until the hat incident goes down and she gets peeved. George keeps calling Mrs. Elster Miss Rising because he remembers her As, as the girl he used to date. Lover calls Mrs. Elstead Thea. So we know that they are on intimate terms. At the same time, Hedda won't let him call her by her first name because it's not proper. When she wants to manipulate Mrs. Elstead into thinking they are good friends. Hatta insists that they use each other's first names. At the beginning of the play, Julie makes a big deal out of Berta refer referring to George as Dr. Tessman now instead of Mr. Tasman. The most illustrative example in the use of names between Hedda and George. George addresses his wife by name 73 times in the course of the play, not to mention all the times he refers to her by name to others. Hedda hardly ever addresses her husband by name. When Tasman thinks that Hedda has destroyed Lobel's manuscript because she loves him, he hopes that she will now start using his name. George clearly feels much closer to his wife than she feels to him. Hedda prefers to keep her formal aristocratic distance. So next symbol which is also present in the act number 2, the symbol, symbol is the babies. Typically we would expect babies to be to be associated with spring flowers light, life, and some very cuddly Easter bunnies. But in this play, babies are associated with destruction. What is life to everyone else spells death for Hedda so uh, let's let's uh, see and analyze it as in act 1 hedda enters the parlor and is distraught to find the glass door open and light pouring in she immediately has george draw the curtains she also dislikes the overly abundant smell of flowers permitting her house and instructs her husband to keep the door open for fresh air. Already we are seeing that for Hedda light and flowers typical, uh, typical signs of life are 
distressing why question is why because she does not want to have a baby letter letter in in act number 2 had a comments again on the smell of flowers this time to judge barak she declares there is an odor of morbidity about it it reminds her of the banquet the day after a ball the implications here are clear had a no longer in the prime of single girl life is herself like a banquet after the ball especially now that she is pregnant the next symbol which we can find in this act number 2 that is the guns this symbol is a little less complicated the pistols once belonged to hader's father so they serve as a constant reminder that she is had a gabbler still and not had a testman in the victorian age the guns were a decidedly masculine object far far the course since had a shies away from traditional feminine interests interests uh, there is also the cool exterior and very interior of a gun a metaphor for had a herself it's interesting that the guns are dangerous to everyone else but had a sees them as toys this is very similar to the way that her lethal manipulations are likely devised solely for her own amusement also also notice that hada keeps her guns in the writing desk check out character role identification for a discussion of foil between hada and mrs elstead we argue that thea is all about creative construction while hada is about violent destruction this point is really driven home when we see that hada uses her writing desk not for writing but for keeping her guns lastly if if you buy into freudian theories keep in mind that the guns are a, a phallic symbol and that hada's obsession with them may just be all about her wanting to be a man the other uh, other symbol which we can observe we can find in this act number 2 that is the inner room the stage set up of hada gabler is important important stuff it is important to remember that there is both an outer and inner room with the letter at the back of the stage and sometimes shielded by curtains over the doorway critics have pointed out that the inner room increasingly becomes hada's own personal space when the play begins the portrait of general gabriel hangs on the wall inside the inside this room later hada remarks that her old piano does not fit in the outer drawing room and has it moved to the back room of course this is where hada chooses to shoot herself behind the curtains no less she retreats from the outer world of patriarchal practicality into her own private world of aesthetics hence her own beautiful death and the way it is shielded from the world so all was this from the act number 2 part number 2 of the play hada gabler 
i hope that you have well understood all the events which are taking place in the whole act and analysis and commentary and symbols which are used in this act thank you